Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new episode of the Skylanders franchise Igniter Solo Lock here on the channel. In the previous episode, not only did we absolutely annihilate good old um, whatever the level names are and set level names here, I'm kidding of course, uh, so I know the level names like the back of my own hand because we beat it, none of the then Sky Screener Docks as well as Stormy Stronghold with some clutches thrown into the mix just for the sake of excitement and investment. Are you not invested? If you are, I'd like to know how I could get you more invested because that's just, you know, the glory of having feedback to better myself for all of you. Myself? As if I have clones? Okay, which number clone Ignite is recording this video? You know, we have one clone of Ignite recording this video here, and then we have clone number, whatever the number is, in the other room recording the next few episodes. You know, it's all a simultaneous type job, because that's just how logic and science works, I guess. Regardless, we have our first lock puzzle of, of the series, and in the previous episode, not only did we have the absolute clutches of the century from one of my fellow clones, but we also got some upgrades for Ignite, and now we have one upgrade away from his path upgrades and then of course once you go through all those path upgrades all that shall be left is his soul gem which we will earn soon enough as Ignite's soul gem pops up in Darkwater Cove for level and um, of course come in straight after this one oil spill island that's popping on up I was about to say proceeding but at least I sure hope that's a correct term to use for the one coming after the one that we're about to play yeah, I think proceeding is the right word. If it's not, then that's what I have a power of Edison for. Okay, so we got the Gergriffin right here, everybody's favourite Gilman. We've got a hint of sarcasm, nor a shadow of doubt. Like, seriously, we have a shadow's here. Oh, wait, never mind, I found him right next to Hugo's fist. And hey, we can even see right out of a corner of one's eye Igniter's um, sword for, you know, a few pixels of the animations just for a little bit of the yeah, air sizzling around it. Oh, wait, let's ship off the oil spill island. I mean for pause for dramatic effects because everyone knows that to increase the drama of any given situation, all you got to do is pause for a few seconds. Bing, bang, boom, automatically ten times more dramatic. You're welcome for those of you seeking said advice that I just advised you on. I mean, it wouldn't be much of an advice if it wasn't advising of sorts, now would it? So here we go, Oil Spell Island, this level's going to be an absolute breeze. We're going to be able to discover very little of it though, considering that Igniter is um, landlocked. He can't swim. It's no one's surprise. I mean, this is a fire spirit we're talking about here. You know, normally, when it comes to igniting the fire, you put the fire in the water, and it does the complete opposite of that. You know, it's an extinguishing of the water. Man, that's an awesome channel name. Shall I change my channel name to that? Extinguish for water. I mean, I don't know how you can extinguish the water, because it's not like it was ever ignit in the first place. Ignit, that's just a funny word. I like that word, mostly because it's the same word as what's in my name, just not at all the same whatsoever, because it's not only past tense, but it also lacks a few letters that's in my finalised name, because my finalised name is a pun due to the knight in Igniter. Well, Igniter himself doesn't have knight in the name, even though it should. Um, but putting a knight in my name, because Ignital is a knight, is just the pun of the century, he goes as far as saying. Yeah, if you guys have no fucking clue what I'm blabbering on about, then neither do I, so you're not the only one in this boat. Boat. Get it? Because there's water all around us, and you sail on water, using boats. Ha <laughs> I'm hilarious, aren't I? Not really, but either way, we have a troll grease monkey to deal with whether I am or I'm not funny. So let's just get it over with all the same words, mighty tough look. Let's deal with it. Boom, baby. Now we've got to redirect this energy room. So let's get to it. It's as simple as that, I suppose. And then there's plenty of gold to go around, so I'll be taking advantage of every uh, last speck of gold right now. But yeah, next up we have Tex Bell Punks, which if you just stand still and let them hit you, it's gonna hurt. You know, their attacks they aren't for the most lightest hitting of things. So, how's about we do the exact opposite of standing around and instead, you know, walk towards this Tex Bell Punk to engage him? 
And then after having said that, I took the hit anyway. Goodbye, my axe is too powerful for you fools. <laughs> thinking you can take on Ignite. Honestly, what were they thinking? You know, that just goes to show the lack of brain cells that trolls ultimately have. Just taking on Igniter, like, what were they expecting to happen besides death? Because death is exactly what happened, precisely as I, myself, was expecting. Because I am knowledgeable enough to know of how much of a beast Igniter is and would never, ever willingly approach him in combat. You do so, you're basically just asking to be bested by him. Oh, wait, we have a glass of troll right here. Yep, gun safety. Who needs any of that? Right, gun safety. Just make guns without the safety. You know, nobody needs gun safety. It's not like gun safety is a necessary law to keep people protected from said guns. You know, if you're worried about people having guns and they aren't safe about it, then don't have guns to begin with. It's that simple, Americans. If you don't want to get shot, don't have guns. <laughs> we just went there. Eh? Oh boy, um, putting all controversial topics aside, I know my friend Luke Smith has a very um, strong opinion on being allowed to have guns in public, so I'll just let his thoughts, uh, you know, take over the video so that then that can kind of wipe controversy away from me. <laughs> but now we're back to the gameplay, so uh, let's continue to explore the world of this island with oil spilled all over it, which is a far superior name if you were to ask me. There you go. Yeah, you hear that good old analog skills right there, you know, I got them sweet old side-to-side -side based maneuvers is what I got, as well as, you know, pipes that I can <laughs> destroy. Oh yeah make a whole song out of that. I'm just not going to because it would be cringy and it would put your ears through absolute tyranny that I am going to save you from. You're welcome. So we have some troll bananas right here. Again, no problem. Boom, he's just going to walk into the laser and then we're just going to deal with the rest of them for good old fashioned way. And by that, I mean literally um, just popping up and Slamming down on him. Hey, that guy hit me. That was awfully rude. Okay, you know, stop, stop him. That is if my fire spirit can actually get up there, which I believe it can't. So we're just gonna save that guy for now. You know, leave him behind for later, where we will ultimately best him. By the way, we've got some more trolls right here to deal with, so let's be doing precisely that. We could also tackle the fire gate down here but I can't be bothered it's really slow paced and not much fun so that's why I'm going to be doing the opposite of tapping it and leaving it well enough alone believe me it's a blessing in disguise with just how bad that fire elemental zone is in the eyes of yours truly oh wait we could fight all these guys or we could just bring out the laser instead a far superior way of dealing with them if you were to ask me and again of course I'd say that considering that that is my friends how I dealt with it all the same and oh boy there's a grenade there that I should avoid as I level up. Then again, I say as I level up, despite the fact that the grenade was nowhere near me whilst I was in the state of having been leveled up from one state to another state. That state being from three to four, just because that's how leveling up works. You know, it's like opinions, they work in very specific ways, and the fact that they work to where if you disagree with my opinion, then you're wrong. Because that's how they work. You know, you don't get more specific than that now, do you? So those of you wondering the definition of opinion, it is simply something that is wrong unless it aligns with the same opinion as Ignite with Fire. By the way, we have tanks to deal with. Much fun, those, said no one ever. So we have the Mark 31, very specific uh, number, that one. By the way, let's get behind this fool and finish him off just like that. And there's even some watermelon uh, to heal us up directly afterwards, some nice nutritious watermelon which I desperately needed because man, that tank, if you take a shell to the face, it's gonna hurt much. Either way, we're still missing one final Gilman, more specifically I knew exactly where that Gilman was, I just have no idea where the key is because it's been years since I played this game and must have just completely forgot to go pick it up and there's a troll back there. Oh, there's several actually. Let's just come in and finish them off with our axe right here. The sword! It will be missed. 
Okay, so where's that Garnet key then? That's the question on everyone's mind right now, most notably mine. That's what I want to know, where this damned key is. It's not there, I can tell you that much. Uh, so, where is the key? You can't walk through there? Oh, that's just annoying and janky, to say the least. Like, good say more, I'm just not, which is why the lease is being said all the same. And also, I'm pretty sure I came back here... Uh, already, yes, yes I have, that's what I got, that gloriousness which was for treasure chest, but it doesn't put me anywhere closer to finding where that key is, oh boy, this is not embarrassing at all, me not knowing where this key is, wait on a sec, was it back here the whole time, yes it was, somehow I missed that, this is what we call an epically embarrassing moment, and it's epic, of course, because that leaves room for alliteration. Double E's and everything, there's only one thing to make the word epic even more epic, and that's by following it up with another word beginning with a letter E for the sake of the alliterative effect. So, yep, that's, uh, that's the problem for Factory, it's just time to blow it up. If in doubt, blow it up. You know, if they're words from the mighty, the wise, the one, the only, the man of many names apparently, even though he's not even a man because instead we're referring to of course Boomer. No man, he is instead a troll. The only troll in Skanders who's a good guy apparently. But regardless of all that, you know, Boomer's advice is when in doubt, blow it up. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be following in Boomer's footsteps and blowing on up that factory. First things first though, I got spell pumps to deal with that I don't like very much. So luckily that's what we got bombs for, as well as more side to side animal mashing. And gold too, you know, you can't go much wrong with that. We're now at 950 with a year boy over here. And it's essentially my boy, because this guy that he's literally the profile um, icon and everything. But yeah, this is a very bizarre commentary if I ever have heard it. <laughs> And when I said I was going to spare the grenade until later and then kill him once we was up on the ledge, clearly I lied because I did not do that. Regardless of all that, though, we have finally beaten the level and I can move away from my very strange commentary style. But hey, you've given that it's strange, you can't say it's not charismatic. So now we load back on up the ruins with the Xbox 360 for fastest loading times of any Skarners game, just because the Xbox 360 of its generation was the most powerful console, which is a bit of a shocker really, considering that of its generation it was the first to be released. The 360 came out in 2005, then the Wii came out in 2006, and the PS3 was a 2007 release. And when the PS3 did release, it released to a very steep price point, so naturally, not many people wound up picking the PlayStation 3 up until it got some um, sales, so naturally the PlayStation 3 was off to a poor start of its generation, which led to it ultimately losing that generation by miles, for Wii and the 360, you know, outsold the PlayStation 3 by miles, but the PlayStation 3 was just about the only PlayStation console which flopped in comparison to its competitors. The PS1 did pretty well in comparison to the Nintendo 64, I'm pretty sure. And the PS2 and PS4 both won their respective generations. And what's funny is that with Nintendo and PlayStation, originally they were supposed to be in uh, collaboration with one another, you know, there was supposed to be a PlayStation that played Nintendo cartridges, but at the very last minute, Nintendo dipped out. They broke the um, agreement, and so instead, Sony went off, made for PlayStation, and Nintendo partnered up with Philips instead. Philips created a console and a line of games that absolutely flopped, and Nintendo gave birth to their biggest competitors. Yeah, they're still slapping themselves over that mistake right now. I mean, you can imagine that PlayStation and Nintendo as one. My apologies for background noise right now, you know, that's just the might of a family life for you. But yeah, we now have Gurglefin walking up with some very strange animations. I suppose the animations just are fitting for the overall strange tone of this episode. You know, you've got your strange commentary, you've got your strange animations. What's not strange about this? The only thing that's strange about this is, I was about to say the lack of strangeness, but that is a total fucking lie because I literally just spent the last 30 seconds acknowledging how strange this whole thing is. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna deal with everything I've said, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not gonna be cutting out a single piece of it because honestly, that's too much to ask for future edition of Ignite to conduct. But what's not too much to ask, however, is me destroying these crates right here. Yes, a uh, police. There's even more crates over there, which I'm absolutely gonna destroy. Why would I say no to that? There's no logical reason for me to say no to that. Especially when one of the crates before now gave me a gem that was worth 100 gold, which I have never seen before. What's unfortunate though is that we currently don't have enough gold to upgrade Igniter, so we're just going to head out to Darkwater Cove and earn his soul gem already. I like that plan. Well, I hope everything's in working order as well there, my friend. You know, if it's not in working order, then we're about to face an awful tragedy, you know, Igniter. Being thrown off the ship into all this water right now. Don't think it's going to end well for him, being, you know, a fire knight and everything. You know, fire knight, fire spirit, you can call whatever the fuck you want because they're basically the same thing. <laughs> so yeah, let's just drop off the face of the skyland, shall we? And here we go with a V1, a V only, a dark water cove, the only level in this game to have the name of an element within its own name, which is bizarre considering that. This entire game's premise is based around the eight elements. On top of that, it also has the name of an element that wasn't even introduced in this game yet, that being Dark, because that element was first introduced in Trap Team. And this is not Trap Team. Yeah, alright. Yeah, we've got games to play, like the one I'm playing now. So I can smash your ass at that. Good luck with that, everyone knows that I am the, the game's champion. Games, whatever games we're playing later, because whatever games we're playing, I'm gonna win. Yeah, no, I doubt that highly. <laughs> yeah, family life I was referring to right there, that, my friends, is a bit of a taster of it all. Unless I edited it all out, in which case that sentence I just said makes no sense to all of you not having the additional context behind it. So either way, I've created for a hilarious situation, that means that I have won. There is no win-win situation here, there is just only win. And that's mine, my win. Carp, watch your language there, Gurglefin. There's no need. Gurglefin with his language, honestly. And people say this is a child friendly game. This ain't making no fucking kids at all that much right now. But yeah, we got some more things to destroy on Battery Island. What does this island have to do with batteries exactly? Yeah, I feel sorry for people who had to name every single area in this game. Clearly, when it came to this area, they just gave up and they just saw a battery out the corner of their eye and it was like, Hey, this is an island. Let's call it Battery Island because we have nothing better to do with our lives besides name the areas in these Skarnas levels, apparently. Yeah, it's just what the universe had set out for them. We could go as far to say, most notably me, because my mouth is opening and those very words that I'm saying are coming out. Other way, we got some foolish enemy fools to deal with. They charge at you straight, but we're not even going to have to worry about that because before they even have a chance to charge, we're taking them out. Oh, I thought it was gold back here, but nope, just a crazy gurgle fin followed me, so, you know, he's going to take a sword to the face for that stupidity of his. But it's kind of weird, you know, they had NPCs follow you in this game, but then they never reintroduced that later on in the franchise, you know. In Giants, you interact with characters in certain um, different areas of the level. Like Troll Home Security is a perfect example where you're constantly inter in interaction with Callie and Flynn. But they don't necessarily follow you. Okay, there goes that guy who was firing me earlier. I found it awfully rude, and so now I've got my revenge. You know what we meant to take to face? That was all part of the plan. But part of the plan of the games where I annihilate everyone, including that of family game night that we are going to be conducting tonight, where I will be annihilating said family at the board games. Once again, harkening back to the context that you may or may not see, depending on whether I choose to edit out or whatnot. <laughs> but honestly, Gurglefin was being awkward and talking, so naturally I'm probably going to have to keep it all in. Unless I cut out the cutscene, which is the complete opposite of what I said I would do, so, you know, gotta remain consistent to my own word and everything, because what kind of man doesn't remain consistent to their own word? They're the worst kind of men is what they are, people who don't remain consistent to themselves. Regardless, we now have more cutscenes showing us the way.
as well as my wart nose too, that might be doing. And hey, there's a bit of a rhyme going on right there, I'm a poet and didn't even know it. So yeah, let's grab that gold right there, man, Igniter's gold count is just whoop right now. Even though there's one enemy here that we did completely miss, so boom baby. Man, I love that attack. <laughs> I love it so much. Anyway, let's open up this game out for everything. And my dad is not going to win those games. He might say he's going to win those games, but he's not going to win those games. That's just the reality of the situation. And it's as for Michael Connors once said, reality is often disappointing. <laughs> like me constantly missing these enemies right now. Like, maybe I should go back and slash one last time. I mean, you know, maybe there's an air particle that I missed. Goodbye. And then we got these guys, which again, we're just going to completely miss, apparently. There you go. Now hitboxes are working with me, I guess. I love this character, but boy, he is jank. So speaking of jankiness, it's time to complete these lock puzzles where if you don't know them, like the back of my hand, unlike yours truly, you're going to have one janky time. Completing them because they are slow paced and annoying. Luckily for me, I do happen to know them like the back of my hand, so we're gonna complete this in the fewest, most moves possible. I think. That's the hope, anyway. Yep, there you go, there you go, there you go. One more left, and another left, and another left, just for good measure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to where, in later games, those lock puzzles are going to be a whole lot more fast-paced and a whole lot more fun. But for now, though, we have bridges, as well as story scrolls that I cannot collect because you need to traverse over the water, a skill which Igniter does not possess. We can, however, destroy all these bones over here and press the wrong buttons. I accidentally pressed the Y button rather than the B button. Because for some reason I went back to the days of the Y a button being for tertiary attack button, you know, the days of swap force, trap team, superchargers, and imaginators. But moving back into the good old Spice Adventure days, we have a treasure chest right here and a piece of treasure that we can't collect because it's in the water where Igniter cannot go. That's disappointing. Anyway, we now have a water swell pump to deal with. The things that send chills right through my bones. <sighs> okay, let's take this fall down. There you go. Oh, wait, never mind. I lied. Took a few more hits than I was expecting, one must admit. Goodbye. Whee! <laughs> the bounce pad there is just so much fun in this game, there's no denying it. But yeah, we are finally slowly but surely approaching Igniter's Soul Gem to the extent to where you can see it out the corner of one eye, uh, one's eyes right now. Yeah, once again, harping back to that level design to where you can see other collectibles from the level in the level in and of itself. You know, once you see the collectibles location, all you need to do is find that location. I found that location for Igniter, who we shall prove you. This is a celebration of Igniter after all, and it's not going to be much of a celebration without the Soul Gem preview now, is it? This character looks really good. I can't wait to play as him. Boy, all them chaotic attacks. And then he's got like a stand of chance right now. Igniter looking all beast like. And that's just me. Or does that enemy look smaller than he was before? I think it's just the camera angle change, it's being very deceitful. Anyway, uh, regardless of how big or whatnot the enemy was, he is defeated right now, all the same. Goodbye. Goodbye. Or maybe not. There you go, we're getting him, boys. Yep, sweet. Gonna grab this gold too while we're at it because why would we just pass up a perfectly good opportunity to grab that gold right now? I can't see a reason to do said uh, things. That's exactly why we're not doing said thing. As I continue to stutter, mind you, because stuttering is in the face of absolute geniuses, and since my face is genius, that's where the stuttering is coming from. Just all of this geniusness being um, emphasised through my utilisation of the constant stutter. Only smart people would understand just the intelligence behind the stuttering in speech. 
See if you understand what I'm talking about, and that just makes you one of the most intelligent people ever to walk the face of the planet. Simply put. There you go, we've got more enemies to take down. That is if my hitboxes want to work, which is, you know, a pretty big ask. Boom! Got him. Okay, now we've got this uh, ward spell to deal with, just to make a change, because apparently we haven't dealt with enough of them already. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to Igniter's later combos, though. They get very um, impressive in terms of the animations, as well as just the sheer amount of power that you can harvest. You know, that one's pretty good. It takes down multiple enemies at once if you can get your hitboxes right, which with this game is easy said than done. And but it's powerful too, so that's what matters at the end of the day. What also matters is me not dying here and defeating all of the enemies rather than being defeated. Okay, there goes them fools. Maybe not. There's one more remaining apparently, which is not being hit by my sword strike right now. There you go, that's more like it. I like the fact that when you attack an enemy in this game, you have that little, like, red um, aesthetic. You know, it makes it really obvious that you hit the enemy. And that you are absolutely creaming them with your absolutely annihilative attacks. Okay, here we go. Boom, baby. Just like that, we can now grab that gold as well as whatever that thing's supposed to be. <laughs> It's for the core of light, that's all I know. It's important. We got it. Let's move on. I'm running. I like that plan. Yep, let's get out of here. That too is a plan I quite like. Is there a plan I don't like? Not that I've heard of. So, yes, we now have to sail on out of here once, of course, we take down these fools. Yes, goodbye. Button mashing for the win, am I right? Okay, here we go for fire spirit, sweet. There you go, okay. So you grab that little piece of gold right now, as well as a chunk of cheese, just for good measure. Malta cheese more specifically, because as we established in the previous episode, that cheese got to melt, however it is that Igniter's even eaten it in the first place, but he's a fire spirit, so... How can a cheese possibly pass through his stomach without having been melted beforehand? And not that we have any problems with that whatsoever, because melted cheese is like cheese, but even more delicious. And I like cheese as is, so saying it's even more delicious than just cheese as is is really saying something. Okay, way, luckily for us, we managed to make the jump right here so we can enter onto the teleporter pad. That is, if the game wants to, you know, register for hitbox. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's head back here, destroy these cannons, you know, clearly these cannons were looking at the teleporter funny and put it, you know, in a state of uneasement. So now that we've destroyed them, the teleporter is, uh, you know, at ease and is going to finally uh, work. The hitboxes are going to collide and the game is going to do as it's been told. That is, it's coding coming in to tell it what to do. Because yes, think of coding as literally just telling the game what it is that it needs to do. Okay, way, uh, enough of the coding talk, let's take out some fools. I like that plan much more than the coding talk. Which is really saying something because the coding talk in and of itself was a good plan. Oh way, I was expecting more enemies. Better yet, I was expecting to actually be able to hit the enemies, but apparently the game said no. But luckily for me, I have plenty of upgrades that we're going to use to conclude this episode with, as we normally do. Like, honestly, when I said I was going to make these episodes 30 minute chunks, I was not expecting that to be for perfect time limit to beat two levels every single episode thus far. But here we are doing exactly that, I suppose. Like, I was expecting somewhat to make it through both of these levels with a little bit of time left to spare for Leviathan's Lagoon. But clearly the length of the game had other plans in mind. So yes, just like that, the bridge shall be lowered. Not that it was much of a bridge, it was just something to be lowered all the same, so it just felt as though saying bridge was an appropriate term, even though it wasn't a fucking bridge, but here I am having said it anyway. And now, we're free. <laughs> just as good as Gifford put it. 
Yeah, let's not start imagining Gurglefin with an eye patch. That would be quite the eyesore. But regardless, we got a few collectibles there. You know, legendary treasure and two treasure chests for good measure. Can't go wrong with them. Both of them have treasure in the name uh, for Pete's sake. So now we have ourselves a cutscene with whatever that magical device is. Because once again, I am not knowledgeable of the name and cannot be bothered to look up the name neither. That's just asking too much of me. You know, research in a YouTube video? How dare you expect this of me? What you can expect of me, however, is good quality um, cutscene recording right now because, man, that cutscene was of high quality. Am I recording of it? Just as much so. In a string of islands. Cool name. I'll get the boat ready. Oh, you'll need more than a boat, I'm afraid. From what I've well then, eternal water source has returned to the sea and can only it can be only be summoned with the four ancient statues, eh? No problem. We just go there and find ancient uh, statues. How hard could it be? You know, not like there's a giant fish out there. You go. You just had to time that so fucking perfectly, didn't you? You just had to. Couldn't help himself. The bastard. Oh, sorry, Barstool. That's my like it. Anyway, anyway, it's time to conclude this video. But first, I have some up. Grades. Could make a whole little jingle out of that. But yeah, luckily for us, the torches are going to be, um, you know, ignit. Literally on fire, like that was the colour of fire. I find that appropriate, because those elemental torches light up with fire based on the colour of the current Skylander's element that's passing by them. And fire's element is, of course, that orangey-red tint, which is the colour of actual real fire. So fire makes those torches look like real fire. How beyond appropriate is that? Either way, I'll tell you what else is appropriate. This sword path because it's the better one. So yeah, once again, we got ourselves some upgrades going. And I believe we have enough gold for at least one more. Don't quite have enough for that one just yet, so for now we can stick with the combinations, which I was alluding to previously on um, this episode, since now what we can do, once this cutscene is said and done with, is we can do this. Boom! Is that not awesome? Because if that's not awesome, I don't know what it is. We can also do a bound, baby. But all combos aside, this video is coming to an end. Thank you so much as always for watching, and I will see you next Thursday for another episode. But until that moment arises, peace.